Philippa Elhart. Although she's not a monarch or part of the nobility of the north, she is one of the most influential political figures the northern realms has ever seen. She ruled and decided the fate of kingdoms from the shadows, without barely anyone knowing about her operations. But gaining this much influence isn't something that happens so easily, as you need to be skilled to be able to pull it off. And Philippa is just that. She is a very talented and skilled mage, and she went down in the history books as one of the most prominent sorceresses from her time. Every magic user decides what type of magic they want to specialize in. Some focus on general aspects, while some others go into a specific direction. For example, Coral with her more water-focused magic, and in The Witcher 3, Aramas with its cheese magic. Philippa also seemed to have a special interest, as she was one of the few to master the art of polymorphy, giving her the ability to transform into an owl. Polymorphy is a very rare magical treat amongst mages in The Witcher. It's very difficult to learn and master, which makes it clear that whoever is able to perform this feat of magic is most likely very, very talented. Philippa has shown a lot of promise since she was a little girl. She was born in Redania, most likely between 150 to 300 years before the current time. As a little girl, she went to study to Arethusa. Here she was taught by Tessaia de Vries. Tessaia noticed how Philippa performed in her classes and took great pride in her. After Philippa's studies, there's a large gap in what we know about what she has done and where she's been. But at some point, she became the fifth member of the Council of Wizards, and she became the court mage of Redania. For many years, she was the royal advisor to King Vizimir II. She helped rule his kingdom, but she wasn't his only help. A Redanian spy had risen into prominence and became an important figure in Redania. Sigismund Dijkstra Philippa and Dijkstra were both heavily involved in Redanian politics, as she often helped him when he needed it. At some point, Philippa and Dijkstra had gotten in a relationship with each other. While, Dijkstra, while to Dijkstra it may at first have been because he had extra feelings for her, it seemed that Philippa was only in it to gain access to the information and the spy network that he was ahead of acting behind his back whenever it would be in her interests. But it was more that was important to Philippa than just the power she had. Magic and her freedom were both two aspects of her life that she valued a lot. And so when Nilfgaard marched to the north, she fought at the Battle of Sodden, where she defended her way of life against the notion that mages should be obedient to their kings and rulers, like how they were handled in Nilfgaard. As you might know, the North won the battle and fended off Nilfgaard for some time to come. In the years after the Battle of Sodden, Philippa started noticing that there was a shady figure going around the North, acting in the interests of an unknown individual. She wanted to know what was going on, and with the help of Dijkstra's intel, she tracked this man down to Oxenford. It was at the same time when Geralt was in the city, on a search for the same person Philippa was looking for. Reens. Once Philippa came to Oxenford, she and Dijkstra met with one of his spies, Dan the Lion. He gives us the following description of his first impressions upon meeting Philippa Alhart. Philippa Alhart, although very attractive, was decidedly very unlikable. Apart from that, Philippa Alhart was an important figure in the Council of Wizards and King Vizimir's trusted court magician. She was a very talented enchantress. Word had it that she was one of the few able to master the art of polymorphy. She looked 30. In truth, she was probably no less than 300 years old. Philippa and Dijkstra questioned Dandelion about what he knew about Geralt and the girl he was seen traveling with. But as Dandelion hadn't seen them in a while, he didn't know much and he couldn't tell them anything even if he wanted to. After their split ways, Philippa kept an eye on where Dandelion was heading, following him in her owl form. He accidentally led Philippa to Geralt, who at that time was messing around with the 17-year-old Shani. 
A big grey owl glided down the sill without a sound. Shiny cried out quietly. Geralt reached for a sword. Don't be silly, Philippa, said Dandelion. The owl disappeared and Philippa Owlheart appeared in its place, squatting awkwardly. The magician immediately jumped down into the room, smoothing down her hair and clothes. Good evening, she said coldly. Introduce me, Dandelion. Without anyone expecting it, Shani actually was the one in the room who had a lead to Reens, and she had seen him with the same man that she sold stolen medication to. And so she led everyone, including Philippa, to that person's home. After the interrogation part was done, they went out into the streets, and Geralt was attacked by a group of renowned killers named the Michelin Brothers, a group of renowned killers who were hired by Reens to kill Geralt. Geralt saw Reens and he quickly cut down all the men standing in between them. When Geralt was ready to strike down and kill Reens, he suddenly was able to move, giving Reens the opportunity to flee. Ten paces behind Geralt stood Philippa Owlhart. From her raised arms emanated a dull light, two streaks, two rays. Both were touching his back, squeezing his arms with luminous pliers. He struggled, in vain. He could not move from the spot. He could only watch as Reen staggered up to the portal, which pulsated in a milky glow. Reens, in no hurry, slowly stepped into the light of the portal, sank in it like a diver, blurred and disappeared. A second later, the oval went out. And for a moment, for a moment, plunging the little street into impenetrable, dense, velvety blackness. As Philippa released Geralt from her spell, he was furious at her for stopping him. Philippa didn't really care what he wanted. Calm down, repeated Philippa Owlhart. You won't understand and you don't have to understand. I did what I had to do and don't call me a traitor. Because I did this precisely as so as to not betray a cause which is greater than you can imagine. A great and important cause. So important that minor matters have to be sacrificed for it. Without second thoughts, if faced with such a choice. Geralt, damn it. We're nattering and you're standing in a pool of blood. Calm down and let me and Shiny take care of you. This is what could have been considered the first hint at Philippa's wish to create the Lord of Sorceresses. She had noticed that many members of the chapter weren't on the side of the North anymore. And after she had seen Reens in person, it seems like she wanted to use what she knew about him against Vilgefort, which would allow her to overthrow the Brotherhood of Sorcerers which in her eyes was filled with traitors to the north and the other mages. But the Brotherhood and Vilgefort wasn't the only thing on her mind, and she was aware of Ciri, and had taken an interest in her magical strength. Philippa had heard about the banquet on Thanet, and the chapter that had called it, and she knew that something was up, and prepared herself and her allies. She also got the help of Dijkstra, with whom she was still at a relationship in at this point. Although it was more like a uh, we both rule the Nia together type of relationship rather than a romantical. It was at this banquet where Geralt and Philippa met each other again. She promised him that she would give him Reens the day after the banquet. And that she was aware of the person who Reens worked for. As they separated in the evening, Philippa also had some conversations with other magic users. Was likely trying to see who she could trust and who would be against her. At night, Philippa and her band of mages went around Thanet and put all the North Guardian conspirators in chains, including Vilgefortz, Francesca and Terranova. She partially managed to do all this due to the help of Dijkstra, who had his men, Rodanian soldiers, help her out. Due to the chaos that was happening, Geralt came across Philippa once again. He was, however, temporarily blinded by Triss so that he would not see anything that he should not. Even though Geralt was blinded, he could still recognize the rhythm of Philippa's footsteps. She ordered Dijkstra to take him away, and she expected him to just stand in her way, uh, as she was also after Ciri at the moment. Right before Dijkstra took him away, Philippa once more told him that she would keep her promise by giving him Reens. Following this, Geralt was taken towards Loxia with Dijkstra and his men, who were ordered by Philippa to leave Thanod. Dijkstra told Geralt that he knew about Ciri and wanted to take her to Rodania without Philippa knowing about it. Geralt didn't like this plan 
and he broke Dijkstra's leg. Philippa thought to have everything under control. However, Tessaia didn't trust Philippa, and she thought she was the one in the wrong. She had ordered Jennifer to bring in Siri and to talk to the medium about what was happening in the world at that moment. Among the things that Siri said in her trance were that a few northern kingdoms had provoked war with Nilfgaard and that Vizimir II of Rodania was assassinated. King Vizimir, interrupted the fair haired medium in an unemotional voice, was murdered yesterday evening, stabbed by an assassin. Rodania no longer has a king. Rodania has not had a king for a very long time, said the Sia de Vries, rising to her feet. The most honorable Philippa Alhart, the worthy successor of Ruffard the White, ruled in Redania. A person prepared to sacrifice tens of thousands of beings in order to gain absolute power. Upon hearing this news, Tsaya stunned the mages on Philippa's side, released the prisoners, and lifted the magical blockade on Garstang. Philippa and her mages had to react quickly, as Francesca had released the square tell that were hidden on Thanos, and their arrows flew towards the mages. Tessaia saw what she had done and tried to stop Vilgefort, but he just laughed at her. She then joined Philippa's side to try and protect them against Vilgefort, who she now saw for who he truly was. As the fighting continued, the mages from both sides fled, as they would rather live than die fighting each other. And so Philippa also left, and she went back to Redania. In the aftermath of what had happened, she helped Dijkstra heal. However, he started to complain a lot and which drove the relationship even further apart as they both had other interests. At this point they have been together for about three years. Only a few weeks after the Thanos coup, Philippa had invited a number of talented sorceresses and proposed to them the idea of starting the Lodge of Sorceresses. The main goal of this organization would be to protect the interests of magic and to make sure that those who could be deemed a threat were dealt with. Dear sisters, she said, the situation is serious. Magic is threatened. The tragic events at Thanet, the thoughts that I remember with great regret and reluctance, have shown that the effects of hundreds of years of seemingly conflict-free cooperation can be forgotten in the blink of an eye, when excessive private interests and ambitions emerge. Today, we are in a breakdown, a disorder. We run into mutual hostility and distrust. This is what happens when things begin to spiral out of control. To regain control, to prevent a terrible disaster, we should take a strong hand to the helm of the ship, carried away by the storm. Lady Loantil, Lady Metz, Lady Marigold, and I have discussed this matter and have reached an agreement. Rebuilding the chapter and the council destroyed at Tanat is not enough. Besides, no one is capable of rebuilding both of these institutions, and there is no guarantee that it will not be infected by the same disease that destroyed the previous one. We will propose a completely different secret organization that will serve only the affairs of magic, which will do everything in its power to prevent a disaster. If magic dies, this world will perish. Just a century ago, a world devoid of magic and the progress it brings will plunge into chaos and darkness. It will be drowned in blood and barbarity. All ladies present here are welcome to join our initiative, to actively participate in a proposed secret group. We have invited you here to hear your views on this matter. I am done. Philippa's home of Monte Carlo would serve as the main base of operations for the Lodge. To prevent the inevitable, there was a spell placed on the castle which, when active, would result in anyone trying to teleport inside or outside to automatically end up in a Dimeritium jail to prevent people from sneaking in. One of the first plans the Lodge made was to attempt to marry Ciri to Kofir, where she would marry Tancred, the son of Estrelat Thyssen. But the problem was that Ciri was missing and Vilgefort was also after her. The Lodge was very aware of the threat posed by Vilgefort and made it an active duty to seek out his hideouts. If they discovered a place which might have been a hideout of Vilgefort, Philippa would give the location to Dijkstra, who would then send in his men. These locations were always abandoned and filled with blood and gore. At this moment, the Lord had all of its members, except one, Jennifer of Vengerberg, 
was brought in by Francesca. Jennifer didn't want anything to do with the lodge, however teleporting away wasn't an option. With the help of Francesca Vigo, she managed to escape anyway, using oysters to teleport to a location where they had been harvested from. By doing this, she circumvented the protection, leaving Philippa furious. She was caught off guard and didn't expect it, and now there was someone out in the world who knew about their lodge that could possibly inform others. Over the following months, the lodge kept operating, and it's around this time when we can see Philippa changing her preference from men to women. Several times in the books, we can see Philippa in her nightdress, either in bed with a woman, or just having left the bed, with still the lipstick on her neck and stuff. As Seal de Tanseville puts it in the Tower of the Swallow. Such a wise woman, and yet she does not know how to keep her hormones in check. I'll leave this subject for now, however it will be of importance later on. To this point, Philippa hasn't really turned herself into someone you could consider to be an evil or very unlikable person yet. The moment this changes is also the moment that made a lot of people not choose to romance Triss in the games. The following conversation was between Philippa, Jennifer and Triss. Obviously, though at least one specific issue, I would like to have an honest and genuine conversation. And incidentally, it involves a favor to me. Speak. Over the next few days, maybe even tomorrow, events will occur, whose consequences I cannot foresee. It may happen that our competition and rivalry suddenly has no more meaning, for the simple reason that one of the competitors will not be there anymore. Philippa Alhart narrowed her blue shaded eyes. I understand. And sure that I posthumously gain back my reputation and good name. I will no longer be held a traitor or an accomplice of Vilgefortz. I ask this of the Lodge. I ask this of you personally. Philippa was silent for a moment. I deny your request, she said finally. I'm sorry, but your exoneration is not in the interest of the Lodge. If you die, you die a traitor. You'll be a traitor and a criminal to Siri, because then it will be easier to manipulate the girl. Before you do something that could be fatal, Tris said suddenly, leave something behind for us. A will. Something that allows us to continue to find Siri, because we are primarily concerned for her health, for her life. Jennifer, Dijkstra has found some traces of some traces of certain activities that have been found. If Vilgefortz does have Siri, then the girl faces a horrible death. Be quiet, Tris, Philip Alhart hissed sharply. We are not trading or bargaining. I'll leave you the information, Jennifer said slowly. I'll leave you the information on what I've found and what I plan. I'll leave you a trail you can follow to her, but not in vain. If you will not facilitate my exoneration in the eyes of the world, then to hell with you and the world. But at least grant me exoneration in the eyes of the Witcher. No, Philippa denied the request almost instantly. That is not in the interest of the Lodge. You will remain a traitor and a mercenary sorceress to your Witcher. It is not in the interest of the Lodge for him to furiously attempt to avenge you. If he despises you, he will not attempt to take revenge. By the way, he's probably already dead, or he will die any day now. The information, Jennifer said dully, for his life. Save him, Philippa. No, Jennifer. Because not in the interest of the Lodge. A purple fire kindled in the sorcerer's eyes. Do you hear that, Triss? There you have your Lodge. You see their true colors, their true interests. What do you think of them? You were a mentor to the girl, almost as you put it, a big sister. And Geralt. Do not attack Triss' relationships, Jennifer. Philippa retaliated with her own fire in her eyes. We will find and rescue the girl, without your help. And if you succeed, that's fine. A thousand thanks, because then you have saved us the trouble. You tear the girl out of the hands of Vilgefortz and will be happy. And Geralt? Who cares about Geralt? Did you hear that, Triss? Forgive me, said Jennifer Gold Dolly. Forgive me, Jennifer. Oh no, Triss. Never. This is what perhaps could be seen as Philippa's coldest moment in the books. Which brings me to her name. It may be just a bit of speculation, but um, there might be a reasoning behind why her last name is Eilhart. In Dutch, Eil, E I L, is pronounced the same way as E J L. 
or in Dutch also called Eil. It's pronounced the same way. This word can mean several things, mostly all coming down to empty or in low concentration of. The second part of her name, heart, just means the heart. Therefore, her name might be an occasion of her lack of compassion and feelings for others. But this is just a theory. I'm not completely sure about this one. I'm just throwing it out there. But returning back to the story, the Lord had entered a period in which Philippa and the rest were awaiting the results from Fragella Vigo, who was trying to get all the information she could out of Geralt. Fragella eventually came out with the news that Philippa had hoped for. The location of Vilgefort. Philippa got excited, so much so that she initially wanted to go there herself and deal with him. But as the plan was to take him alive, she instead controlled herself and sent in Kira Metz and Sabrina Glavisic, along with a group of novices and mercenaries. They went to Reesrun Castle in Azir. They watched as black figures flew by the mountains, as silent and agile as bats, as they broke formation and descended into the battlements and the ramparts of Reesrun Castle. And this has been a hundred years ago, murmured Philippa, that I have a broom between my legs. Soon I'll forget how to fly. So basically, magic users in The Witcher can fly on broomsticks, and so did Philippa in the past. Which is not what something you would expect when you look at them, but okay. They expected to find Vilgefortz, and yet all they found were cobwebs. Geralt had lied to Fragilla about the location of Vilgefortz, while he, in the meantime, went to the real location. Philippa realized how foolish they would look for attacking an abandoned castle, and therefore they told the novices and mercenaries that it was practice. While Philippa decided what they should do next. This castle, Philippa said thoughtfully, ignoring the others. This castle, we run. We will have to destroy it. Completely lay it to ruins. And any records of this whole affair, legends or traditions, will be required to submit to careful censorship. Do you ladies know what I mean? Philippa would never get her hands on Vilgefortz. As against what they had expected, Geralt had killed him. Philippa learned of his death due to the information that a seer claimed to have gotten from a common soldier. Well, this most likely wasn't the case. She most likely got the information from Cantarella, who was at the moment still spying on Vatier de Rideau. As around this time, the war came to an end. The Lords made sure to listen to the peace negotiations in secret. They wanted to know what was being decided and what influence they could have on the kings. But Philippa, even though the war had ended and Vilgefors was dead, wasn't safe yet. Dijkstra had traded information with Nilfgaard, in exchange for the person, for the identity of the person who was behind the assassination of King Vizimir. Philippa Alhart. As the North celebrated the victory of Nilfgaard, Philippa was there in Novigrad, where parades were being held, watching over the young Radovid. Nobody shouts, long live Vredovet, thought the prince covered by the hierarch's fat ass. No one even looks at me. No. No one is screaming in honor of my mother. No one remembers my poor father. Even today, at a day of triumph, with his so richly deserved. After all, that was why he was murdered. He felt a gaze on his neck, delicate like someone he did not know or knew but only in his dreams. Something that was like a soft brush of a woman's warm lips. He turned his head and discovered the dark, unfathomable eyes of Philippa Owlhart, fixed on him. Wait, thought the prince, just looking away. Just wait. No one could predict or guess that this boy of 13 years, which at that time was a person without any relevance in a country ruled by a regency council and Dijkstra, would become king. A king, who after he paid all the insults that had been given to his mother and him, would go down in history with the name Redovit the Stern. This is the first moment where we can see Redovit uh, from the game starting to come to life. Fueled by his feelings of injustice and wanting to gain respect. Philippa would be on his side, teaching him how to rule. Dijkstra, however, wouldn't remain in Redenia for long. When he asked Philippa for some time alone with her, to talk about something she knew that he most likely knew about her role in Vesemir's death, and thus she decided that she didn't need him anymore, 
and soon after sent assassins after him. Dijkstra escaped and fled to Jerakania. With Dijkstra out of the way, and her complete control over Velvet, she turned her attention back to the Lords and their plans. They still wanted Ciri to join them in their plans. Philippa summoned Jennifer to take Ciri with her at a certain date. Instead, Jennifer told Philippa that she would come in advance, while Ciri would arrive at a later date, allowing her to spend a bit more time with Geralt. Once the time came where Ciri was presented to the Lords, they told her about their plans, what they wanted from her. But there was one thing that they had not decided on yet. What her last name should be, as using her real last name would result in suspicion, as the real Cirilla of Sintra was married to Emir Var Emreis, the fake version, but the real one to history. As using her last name would raise suspicion, therefore that each member of the Lodge proposed Siri to take their last name including the option of Cyrilla Alhart. But Ciri chose that if she were to take part in the plans of the Lodge, she would be called Vengerberg instead. Cyrilla Vengerberg. Yet before Ciri would accept to take part in the Lodge's schemes, she requested to meet Geralt one more time in Rivia. The Lodge had a vote on this, whether they would allow it. It was tied. Half was for, and half was against. Resulting in the deciding vote being left to Philippa. As she was about to choose, she got a vision or a dream. The bottom of the pond was a multicolored mosaic. The colored tiles appeared to move. Sitting on the pond, creating shadows, were the broad leaves of the water lilies hiding goldfish. The water surface reflected the dark eyes of the little girl. Her long hair floated on the water. The girl had forgotten the whole world laying on the edge of the pool with her little hands in the water. She went to try and touch the gold and red fish. The fish approached her fingers and palms, curiously circling around them. But she couldn't catch them. They remained, an elusive. they remained as elusive as light and shadow, as the water itself. The dark-eyed girls clutched the emptiness. Philippa! It was the most beloved voice in the world. And yet she was not a little girl now. Furthermore, she was not looking into the water. The water lilies, fish and reflection were gone. Philippa! Philippa! Sealed Tansafil's sharp voice pulled her from her reflection. Pulled her from her reflections. We are waiting. Through the open window came the cold wind of spring. Philippa Awart shuddered. Death, she thought. Death has passed by my side. This lord, she says that in a firm voice, is to decide the fate of the world. So this large must reflect the world. Here, equilibrium and wisdom does not always mean cold and selfish. Calculation and foulness. And sentimentality is not always naive. On one hand, iron discipline. On the other hand, responsibility. Resistance to violence. Gentleness and trust. Cool reason and heart. I shut into the silence that reigns after introduction. Cast the last vote. I will take into account one more thing, an element that without balancing anything would balance almost everything. Following a gaze, everyone looked at the wall, to the mosaic of the many colored tiles depicting the snake Urbros, biting its own tail. That thing, she continued, staring with the dark eyes at Ciri, is destiny, in which I, Philippa Alhart, have only begun to believe in recently. Which is why I have only recently begun to understand. Destiny is not the way to providence or comfortable fatalism. Destiny is hope. I am full of hope that it will become what we want to happen. So I give my votes to Siri, child of destiny, child of hope. In the pillared hall of Monte Carlo, the room was silent for a long time. From outside of the window came a hunting cry. From a sea eagle. Lady Yennefer, Siri whispered. It means, come my daughter, Yennefer whispered back. Geralt is waiting for us, and it's a long road ahead. As this was Philippa's last appearance in the books, what will follow is based on the games. Over the years of the Second Northern War, Philippa thought rather fit how to rule. 
while in the meantime still influencing war and politics through the Lodge. Like how the Lodge had stopped the war between Catwin and Adarn by creating a ghostly field in the middle, which resulted in Sabrina's death. Philippa didn't have access to Shiri as she jumped to a different world, and so she sought a new way to, to seek influence. As the King of Adarn had recently died, and she was kind of behind the death, so that's, uh, yeah. Uh, there was a small kingdom that formed an upper Adern, around a woman who was called Saskia the Dragon Slayer. Philippa saw this as a new way to gain more influence, and traveled to Fergan. Yet once she arrived, she noticed something strange about her, but she didn't know yet what it was. While in Fergan, Philippa also had taken on a new apprentice quite recently, Cynthia who unbeknownst to Philippa was an Guardian mage and spy. As I said earlier, Philippa would sometimes be driven by lust. This made her blind to the reality that her apprentice and lover was an Guardian spy. As Philippa stayed in Fergan, she and Geralt of Rivia met once again. However, not too long after Geralt had arrived, Saskia was poisoned by Stannis, the son of the recently deceased King Demophant. Because Saskia was poisoned, Philippa had the chance to inspect her, to see what was so special about her. And she discovered the true identity of Saskia. That she was actually a dragon. She had Geralt get in certain ingredients which would be used, which would be used as medicine for, for Saskia. But it wasn't the medicine. Instead, Philippa used the ingredients to put a spell on Saskia, so that she would be able to gain full control over a dragon. After Philippa had so-called cured Saskia, she helps Geralt lift the spell of the Spectre Fork between the field, on the field between Catwin and Fergan. Once the battle was fought, done and over, Philippa returned to Redavid, who was in Loch Muin, where he had called in a meeting with Northern leaders and Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard managed to get their hands on the information about the Lodge and Philippa's actions, which they gave to Redavid. Upon hearing this, Redavid ordered Philippa to be locked up. He went to her cell to confront her about what she had done, how she had been behind the deaths of two kings, and how she expected her, and how he expected her to also be behind his father's death. Philippa refused to confess anything, and so Redavid had her eyes gouged out. He and his soldiers left, he had a meeting to attend to, but he would return with the intention of harming and torturing her further. Fortunately for Philippa, Geralt and Jorveth helped her escape as he needed her help with lifting the spell from Saskia. They succeeded in getting what they needed, yet Philippa fled from them. It was around this time when Radovid started hunting down mages, as he didn't trust them. Meanwhile, Philippa had fled to Estayar, where she'd made her hideout. She tried to restore her eyesight and contacted Margarita Loantil to see if she could help her. Unfortunately, Philippa's attempt at fixing her eyesight the same way Figure Forge had done, didn't succeed, and the Redanians started to get closer to her, resulting in her having to flee. She went to Novigrad, where she met with an old lover, Arthur the Vleister. He convinced her to turn into an owl, yet when she was in an owl shape, she, he put on a Dimeritian bracelet around her ankle, resulting in her being stuck as an owl. Arthur was the only one that knew that she was hiding in that shape but he soon after got caught by the witch hunters and was burned to death. Philippa was also... Philippa was seen to many as just an owl and got handled from person to person thanks to people losing her in games of Gwent. As a result of this, she eventually became property of Zoltan, who lost her to Dijkstra. Dijkstra was out to get revenge on her for sending assassins after him. Even blind, Philippa was proven stronger than Dijkstra had expected. His men were no match for her. Yet the witcher Geralt managed to get her and convince her that he wasn't going to harm her. He took Philippa back with him to the Chameleon, where Philippa and Margarita had a talk with Ciri in private, most likely concerning the future with the Lodge. Philippa would join Geralt, Ciri, Yennefer and the other Lodge members to Skellige, but it would face off against the Wild Hunt. Yet first, a few things had to be done. If you decide to assassinate Radovid in The Witcher 3, it is Philippa who kills him, taking her revenge on him for blinding her. Once they arrive at Skellige, 
Philippa helps Geralt the search for Sunstone, but they need to summon the Wild Hunt. During Geralt's and Philippa's spelunking, Philippa requested Geralt to take Yennefer somewhere far away, as she wanted to take the place of Yennefer in Nilfgaard. Philippa wanted Ciri to become Empress, and she would be by her side, guiding her. For some reason, Philippa had changed plans between the books and The Witcher 3, as instead of keeping Nilfgaard out, she now wanted to be in control over Nilfgaard, which can have its reasons, as Ciri would most likely grant the mages in Nilfgaard more freedom than they had in the south at first, allowing them to live more like the ones in the north, I guess. Yet this is what Philippa wants, not what Ciri wants. It isn't guaranteed that she will become Empress as there are three endings to the game. Philippa helped in the battle against the Wild Hunt, along with the other sorceresses. And that would seem the end of her story in the games. Yet there is one part of the books that I left out. A segment which I'll now talk about. Her death. During celebrations in Novigrad, there was a priest present there, named Willemer. Once you make a mistake, thought priest Willemer fixing his eyes on the shiny red lips of Philippa. Or any of you make a mistake, you'll lose your conceit, arrogance and pride, the plots that you weave, your immorality, your atrocity, and the provisions to which you surrender, in which you live. All light will eventually leave, and the pestilence of your sins will spread when you make a mistake. The moment will come, because even if you do not make a mistake, I will find a way to defame you. Some misfortune will befall mankind. A curse, a plague, a pestilence, or perhaps an epidemic. Then all the blame will be on you. You will be punished for not having been able to prevent the plague, by not knowing how to avoid its consequences. You will carry with you all the blame, and then I will light the fire. This was just what was going on in his mind, but an a description of how she died can be found in a book which is being told as part of an in-universe book in the, from the future. As many of the other faithful, since Philippa was also besmirched with betraying the kingdom, including riots and plotting a coup. Willemer, a heretic and a sanctuary, unlawfully appointed himself the title of Archpriest and ordered St. Philippa to be thrown into a dark dungeon and to plague her with cold and hunger until she confessed to her sins, of which she was accused and repented. Also, various instruments of torture were used to try and break her spirit. But St. Philippa, with his dame, spit in his face and accused him of sodomy. The heretic had disrobed her and whipped her with barbed wire and placed sharp splinters under her nails, while unceasingly preaching about his faith and denouncing the goddess. But St. Philippa laughed at him, recommended him to heal a sick mind. Willemer Willib then gave the order to have her taken to the wreck and stretched while tearing her body with sharp hooks and burning her with candles. Although thus tormented, St. Philippa showed no weakness in body and indeed her resistance and endurance seemed almost superhuman. The executioner's arms went limp with fear. They retreated from her. Then the, her the filthy heretic Willemer began to threaten them and told them to continue the torment. They burned St. Philippa with red hot irons, pulled her limbs out of her joints and pulled at her breasts with blacksmith tongues. And although she passed away from this torment, she confessed nothing. The shameless heretic Willemer, we read in the books of her holy fathers, later suffered for this punishment. And it was that lice and worms began to eat him alive. His entrails rotted away, and he died miserably. His carcass carried with it a foul stench, and nobody wanted to bury him. And so, he was dropped into a swamp. For the suffering and death of St. Philippa, the eternal memory of a martyr's crown rightfully belongs. Let us give the great mother goddess praise, for lessons and teachings. Amen. In her death, Philippa would become a saint and martyr. She would be an inspiration to many sorceresses in the future. However, as is told by Nimwa in Lady of the Lake, her likeness has been lost over time, but she was still remembered as an important figure. Philippa seemed to long for power most of her life. She could be called harder to anyone who stood in her way, and would always have some secret plans hidden away out of sight. She would lie, 
cheat scheme to get what she wants. All in the name of magic. That was it for Philippa Alhart. I'm aware that this video was long, and if you're listening still, thank you for sticking around till the end. This video took somewhat longer to make, as it's almost double the length of the script that was till now the longest on the channel. Uh, so thank you for sticking around. If you've got any character or topic you would like to see in the video, leave it in the comments. Till the next video. Bye.